Hello, friends. Welcome back to the Empowerment Tribe. My name is Michelle Fondin. I'm an author and speaker. And today's topic is God doesn't know poverty consciousness. This is in a sub series that I'm doing on empowering thoughts. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you might not know, but I have transitioned this channel to be about self-actualization and self-realization. And if you are new to these concepts, I did post a video on what is self-actualization just recently, and I'm gonna put that link right here so you can check that out after this video. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Okay, I am here with my Grogu Tumblr, with my Ticino Dandelion Caramel Nut Tea, which is fabulous. And I don't get a kickback from Ticino, believe me. Not yet, at least. I am also here with my two mascots. I have Gudetama. And I think I was saying in a vlog that I do have a brand spanking new Gudetama Cafe that is really close to my house in Buena Park, California. So I'm gonna go check that out with my son. And we have Grogu, my pet one. Why do I like Jedi's? Because it's about managing the energies of the force, the good and the bad. And that's what we're here to do is balance energies. And today we're talking about empowering thoughts. Okay, I always present one or two of my published books. This is a way in which you can help the channel and support this channel. And my brand new book is called The Empowered Divine Feminine, Becoming an Unstoppable Woman in the 21st Century and Beyond. You can pick this up on Amazon in any format. Yes, this book is available in any format. Let's talk about how God doesn't know poverty consciousness. Now, I've been doing a lot, a lot of reading on empowering thoughts. Now, <laughs> this book that I am currently rereading and rereading and rereading was first presented to me probably around 2017, 2018, but I did read it in early 2018 before I moved to California. It is called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, and it was written in the year 1910, believe it or not. And one of the quotes for this video is coming from that book. And the quote is, nature is an inexhaustible storehouse of riches the supply will never run short. Original substance, and I put in parentheses God, is alive with creative energy and is constantly producing more forms. There's also a second quote from this book, and it is, the universe is a great living presence, always moving inherently toward more life and fuller functioning. Nature is formed for the advancement of life. Its impelling motive is the increase of life. For this cause, everything which can possibly minister to life is bountifully provided. There can be no lack unless God is to contradict himself and nullify his own works. Wow, that is so incredibly powerful. And when I read that and reread that, I'm now on my third or fourth time reading the book because I'm trying to memorize the entire book. It's very short, it's only about 60 pages. It hit me because, and I'll, I'll tell a little bit about my story and my thought patterns in a little bit, but it hit me because how often do we fall into poverty mindset? How often do we fall into lack mentality? And these quotes are saying, that is not God. That is not God consciousness. That is human consciousness or ego consciousness. It certainly is not God consciousness. Last but not least, I have a quote from the Bible. Now this quote was given to me by my mother when I was very young. And in fact, my mom used to have Bible quotes taped on the bathroom mirror. So she would type them out and then she would tape them on the bathroom mirror. And this one comes from Luke 
chapter 12, verses 22 to 31. I am going to only read, however, verses 25 to 31, because it's very, very long. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over bigger things? Look at the lilies and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world, but your father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and he will give you everything you need. God does not know poverty consciousness. That is coming directly from the Bible, whether you believe it or not, whether you believe that that is a sacred text or not. Even this gentleman who lived in the 19th and early 20th centuries, Mr. Waddles, and I always have to look up his name because he has two W's in his name and they're not names that I'm using every day. I have to constantly look up his name. Wallace D. Waddles, there you go. He was a, an author of the early 20th century and really he lived mostly in the 19th century. And this person, who was writing about the science of getting rich was stating basically the same thing that God does not know poverty consciousness. God does not know lack. All right. I'm going to tell you a little personal story of how I noticed this. The other day I had a gardener. So I rent a house. The owner pays for the gardener to come once a week and to do very minimal things, but do some things. And since I'm very environmentally friendly, I noticed that this gardener outside of my window was spraying weed killer all over the patio and all over like the perimeter of the property. And I'm like, well, what's going on? Because I have a cat. She comes on the patio with me. She's not an outdoor cat. But I was thinking like, oh my God, this is poison. Why are we poisoning things? And as it turns out, this was requested by the owner that he come in and kill the weeds. And he said to me, rest assured, within a week, these weeds will all be dead. Okay, so as he predicted, within a week, all of the weeds were dead. However, even in the cracks of the patio, two weeks later, little sprouts of the weeds began to creep up again. And that is the way of things. That is the way of nature. That is the way of God, the creator. Now, whether you want to call him God, spirit, universal source, creative source, whatever your name is, does not change the nature of who God is. God is always creating, always growing, always bringing a fuller existence, no matter how badly you want to kill off the weeds. Another example is, have you ever had ants or mice in your home? And you've tried to put down ant traps and kill these ants. And it seems like you go to sleep at night with the ant traps and you wake up in the morning and there's like 500,000 more ants, right? They keep multiplying. It's the same thing if you've ever had a mouse problem in your house. It just seems like they just multiply. That is the nature of creative source. That is the nature of God. The nature of creative source is to create, 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 create. And it does not know lack. It does not know poverty consciousness. Yet why do we sit here in poverty consciousness when things aren't going our way? Why do we sit here and lack mentality and lack consciousness when we don't see things happening in our timeline, right? And I know this firsthand. I know it firsthand. Now, let me preface this by saying, I have been working diligently around the clock lately to change my thoughts. 
I've done this periodically throughout the years, but I've always fallen back into that lack mentality, into that poverty consciousness, because it was something I was raised with. And also the human mind as a reptilian brain, if you will, our ancient brain has evolved to be a survivalist brain for millions and millions and millions of years. Since the dawn of humanity, or homo sapiens, if you will, our reptilian part of the brain, that fight or flight part of the brain, is very survivalist in nature. And so if you are not conscientious of your thoughts, they will go to survivalist thinking. They will go to lack mentality. They will go to competitive thoughts that if you don't get yours, someone else will get it. And so our brains naturally go to the lowest common denominator. In other words, it's going to lack mentality. It's going to worry, anxiety, and fear. And I've recently, because of past patterns of this, I have been working diligently around the clock to change this thinking for myself. And already it has brought to me these miracles that are occurring. Now they're not humongous miracles yet, but these are small little signs, small miracles that are showing me that I'm on the right path. And in fact, as I'm filming this, I'm looking over to my wall of my office to the right side of me. I have this painting on my wall of the Buddha with a phrase underneath it. It's a Buddhist saying. And I'm gonna turn just to read it exactly. And it is all that we are is the result of what we have thought. All we are is a result of what we have thought. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking lack? Are you thinking poverty consciousness? Are you thinking that you'll never get enough or you'll never get enough money to pay the bills or you'll never have better health or the love of your life or a better home or a better car or a better job? Is that your thinking? Because if that is your thinking, you are not thinking like God thinks because God thinks only in abundance. God thinks only in create, create, create more. Grow more weeds, even when you put the weed killer down. Grow those weeds. They're gonna come sprouting up from the cracks of the earth. And they're just gonna keep coming back, no matter how much weed killer you use. If you kill the ants, they're just gonna multiply and come back. <laughs> if you kill the spiders in your house, they'll find a way. They'll find a way back into your house somehow. Because that is the nature of creation. The nature of creation is to multiply. The nature of creation is to grow to expand, to be full, to live to the fullest extent of things. Now, I promised you that I would give you part of my story, didn't I? Since 2008, I have been self-employed. There was a year where I worked at Disney for Disneyland, but even during that year, I was still working my self-employment. So I've been self-employed since 2008. I went through a divorce around that time and I was raising three children pretty much on my own. I had the help with some child support and every other weekend with dad for the kids. But other than that, it was pretty much me full time, which meant that I also had a full time budget taking care of three children. And because self-employment was a newer concept for me and I was really learning by the skin of my teeth, literally, I had no idea what I was doing, making a hundred million mistakes. As with anyone who is self-employed, working for themselves and responsible for their own income, there are highs and lows, there are ebbs and flows, and sometimes the lows can get very low. Sometimes the highs can get very high. And when the highs are high, I was like, yay, okay, I'm in the flow, I'm working hard, I'm doing it, I'm seeing results. But when the lows would come, I would get depressed. I would get dark. I would get anxious. I would go into lack mentality. I would question myself, question my methods. Am I doing things right? Should I stop? Should I get a job? And it was something that caused me to spin 
into negativity, spin into lack consciousness, spin into poverty consciousness. And even though I do have a sense of faith, it was something that was lethal for me. And here's why it was lethal. Because if you have a lack mentality and poverty consciousness, you're gonna stop doing the things that were working when things were really high because you think you are deceived to think that there is lack. So you go into that competitive mindset, you go into overwork, you go into overdrive, and you start to ruin the things that were actually working when things were going well for you. Now this goes for anything. You don't have to be self-employed. It could be for love in romance. If you're trying to find the one and you go on dates and at some point it's working, then at other times it doesn't work so well. And that's when people tend to go into that lack mentality. Oh, there's no one out there. All the good ones are taken or the man I want, I'm a heterosexual woman. The man I want, they're all gay. They're all whatever. They're taken, they're married. They don't want relationships. They're emotionally unavailable. And we go into that lack mentality, which drags you down. And if according to Buddhist thought, everything we are is a result of what we have thought, then if you entertain the thoughts of lack, that is what you will get back is lack. If you entertain the thoughts of worry, when here, right here, Jesus in the Bible, in Luke said, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if worry can't accomplish a little thing like that, what's the use of worrying over big things? I believe it's in the Bible. It's mentioned like 42 or 43 times. Do not fear. Do not worry. Do not fear. Do not worry over and over and over and over again. Because worry is the opposite of faith. Worry is the opposite of abundance consciousness. Worry is lack consciousness. It is lack mentality. And God does not know lack mentality. God only knows abundance consciousness. God only knows. The only thing that resonates with God is abundance consciousness. And so when you go into lack mentality, you are not in alignment with God. You're not up here at the same resonance with God. You're not speaking God's language, especially when you go into begging mode. Please, 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 God, give me this. I need this. I need, I need that money to pay that bill. I need the money to pay my rent. Please, 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 please. That's still lack mentality. That's assuming that God does not want to give you the tools, the things that you need to live in this life, which is so wrong thinking. That is so wrong God put us on this planet with everything we need to thrive, not just survive. And so we need to start to think like God thinks. We need to elevate our thoughts to the level of God in a language that God understands. God only understands abundance. God only understands abundance consciousness from the point at which you know you know that you know that you know that God loves you and cares for you as a creation of God. And so that, of course, of course, he will give you what you need. Of course, he will give you what you want. Of course, he will give you everything you need in this life to, to thrive, not just to survive. And when you go into it with the expectation of of course, God, you will provide for me everything that I need and it will come on time. And you stay in that frequency, you will notice that things will show up for you. It might start with little miracles. Like for me, it, it might, st and I've had great big miracles in my life. Believe me, believe me. I've had so many humongous miracles that have come for me. It's just that it's very easy for us because we are humans and this is a practice. You need to practice this. It's very easy for us as humans to go into the lack mentality, the poverty mentality. So easy for our brains to do that. And it is a fight upstream sometimes until it becomes a habit to stay in that abundance consciousness, 
to stay in the consciousness of, of course, God, of course you will give me what I need because you love me unconditionally. Let's look at a few things that you can say when you're talking to the creative source, when you're talking to God, when you're talking to spirit. And I'm just going to give you some examples of this so that you can recalibrate your brain, if you will. So if you are sick and trying to get over an illness, instead of saying to God, it's a supplicative prayer, which is like, oh dear God, help me, I'm so sick. Help me to get better, I'm so sick. You want to say, God, Help me see the wholeness that I already am. Help me align with perfect wellness because that is my true nature. Do you see how that's like abundance consciousness? Like I am already whole. Help me to see the alignment with my wholeness and with my true nature. Thank you. Rather than saying to God, oh dear God, please help me pay this bill by its due date. Please, 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 please. Speak faith into your situation. You could say, God, I know you are the ultimate provider of my every earthly need and that you want me to succeed and be everything I can be in this life. I know you are sending all good things my way to fulfill this purpose. Prayers of gratitude as if it were already here work much, 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 much better than sup Lificative prayer, which is like begging, right? We don't want to beg God. God hears all, sees all, knows all. God already knows your needs. And God is already in a place to fulfill everything that you need, everything that you desire. Because the desires you have, as long as they are aligned with creative source, as long as they are aligned with God consciousness, all of your desires will be fulfilled because those desires really come from God. They come from God's desire to experience fullness of creativity in the things he's already created, right? Think back to those weeds. If God was going to be defeatist, you'd be like, oh, okay, you know what? That human just put poison all over these plants because God doesn't know the difference between a weed and a plant. And oh, forget it. I'll just stop creating. Can you imagine if God did that? If God just stopped creating. No. No more cows. No more bunnies. No more kitties. No more plants. Nope. I'm done. I don't want to create anymore. But that's not what God does. So when we go into it with that mindset of everything I need is already here, all of my needs are already fulfilled, we will never go into lack mentality again. And once you can accomplish that, and like I said, it's an uphill battle because the brain always goes to the, the negative. But if you can train your brain, I was saying to myself this week, I'm letting go of worry as if it were a bad habit because it is. So I'm working to let go of all worry as if it were a bad habit. So when you let go of that poverty mindset, when you let go of that lack mentality, you will find the miraculous happens more frequently in your life. So let's do it together, shall we? I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to this channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. Thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with others who could use a boost of abundance-minded mentality. Thank you so much for your support of this YouTube channel. You can purchase one of my 11 published books. You can donate on Patreon to this channel, which is super helpful. And I'll see you in the next video.